from Boston. Welcome to Off the Bench. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Off the Bench. I'm your host, Ethan McDowell. I'm joined today by Cameron Manning and Katie Reed. We begin the st with the story everyone is talking about. What is going on with Antonio Brown? The star wideout was cut by the Patriots last weekend. Guys, your initial thoughts. Okay, so honestly, I personally don't like uh, Antonio Brown as a human. I think he's really just showed his terrible character throughout these past couple of weeks, and I'm just not impressed. I was really never impressed with him. He's a decent player, but that's about all he has going for him right now. I, just, I, I personally am shell-shocked by all this news, and I just can't believe that Antonio Brown would smudge his Hall of Fame like career like that. I mean, he's a I think he's more than decent. I think he's tremendous. I think he's elusive. He's fast. He's quick. He's had the credentials. He's won a Super Bowl with the Steelers, but he's just been a, a diva and a nutcase. He literally flushed $30 million on the drain. Yeah, I That's mean, an exorbitant amount of money that he just threw away because he's being petty. He, I know. He put someone on blast. Like he put one of his accusers on blast, which I think is just one of the cla most classless things you could possibly do. I mean, we can talk about, we can go down the line here about AB's last two months in the NFL. Can we just smear him? Yeah, I mean, Perfect. We, I mean, we could. I mean, like, I love it. I mean, yeah, this, no, this, and I mean, this guy is like going off the rails here. He drove himself out of Pittsburgh. He wanted to change the scenery. I get that. Some players just don't yeah. get along with the other teams. But like, to go through this whole thing where he gets frostbite on his feet and then he has the helmet grievance, like, can you please just change your damn helmet, please, and just move on with the games? I mean, like, what's the, what's the deal with the helmet thing? The helmet thing is a matter of, like, it's a matter of, like, comfort, and it makes him feel safe. But also, what your safety is not, like, your concern for your safety is also not the same as the league standard for the safety. And they have those um, policies in line for a reason, because he could turn around and say, oh, I have a traumatic brain injury, or I have head trauma, and it's because the NFL never, like, moderated my helmet or anything like that, but that's it's on him. I mean, Antonio Brown, please just move on with the helmet thing. I mean, yeah. the fact that he threatened to initially retire based on that helmet grievance is petty. absurd. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I just think that also, again, Antonio Brown, I mean, the helmet thing, and then his, con and his um, he had like a conflict with the GM of the Raiders, I believe, Mike yeah. Mayock. Mm -hmm. And he just, and he tweets out stuff. His social just... media is just... It's just, it's just He just dug himself into a hole, and now he's trying to patch it, and I think he thought by either getting himself out of both Pittsburgh and then out of Oakland, and he thought New Coast, well, actually, technically not New Coast, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's on the East Coast, but he thought by coming to a team with such, like, prestige and such a history, not, a lot of people probably thought, oh, they'll shape him up, it'll be fine, he'll, like go back to the normal Antonio Brown that was just the player and he would like occasionally be snarky but now it's not it's gone much it's gone much farther past that oh absolutely it's the absolutely. fact is that he's just not a nice human being no he's not I just don't like him as and, a human I mean frankly Antonio Brown joins like a long list of and a previous mm -hmm. NFL like scuttlebutts incidents. that have gone yeah mm -hmm. incidents that have gone on and I guess like now I'm thinking like at the Patriots like how did they not know because you have to know. And, then, and if they were, and if they didn't know and they turned a blind eye, then that's completely their fault. And they dug them, and they did this to themselves. I thought they handled the situation pretty well, though. They handled it as any football team should. They were very classy. They didn't make any comments. I mean, obviously, you can see that Bill Belichick and all the members of the Patriots were just being blasted with questions, and they're just trying to do their job. What he should have done, he should have done his job, and he should have just played football. Mind you, that statement can be used against me, and I know that there are other players in the same instance that have had reasons to carry out the actions that they did, but he has no reason. I just think it's just so dumb because you're worried, like, you're getting paid millions of dollars to run routes and catch balls. Like, I mean, it's the same thing with baseball. I mean, you're getting paid these absurd amount of money. Just go out and play the game that you love. I'm not sure, like, why you have to have this whole helmet grievance and this persona that you are this tough person that and you're that you're like, like above yourself. everyone else i mean you're a professional athlete which is the highest you can be as like you're supposed to be classy lead by example send a good one for the younger people who are getting into the game i mean what is this saying what is it like is this can like, i also say something about that like before we wrap up the NFL has a notorious history of not doing anything about oh absolutely uh, domestic violence no and that has bothered me forever because They'll give a longer suspension for performance-enhancing drugs, but not for 
domestic violence. And that's yeah. just, that's on the league, that's on him, that's on the Patriots. It's a whole lot of people that are at fault right now. All right. And moving on to the Giants. It appears they have found their quarterback of the future. Rookie first rounder Daniel Jones had a strong debut on Sunday against the Buccaneers. Jones threw for 336 yards as well as combining for three total touchdowns. Is Jones the real deal or should we pump the brakes a little? Katie? Um, I am not going to discredit Daniel, Daniel Jones anything. I think that he played a phenomenal game. And to make that comeback from being 28 and 10 at the half and then winning the game 32 to 31, that is a great feat. For a rookie quarterback, you can't put all your cards in one. You can't put all your cards in the table for this one. You can't go all in because there are great quarterbacks that have come out in the first round, but I think that he is, he's better than most, but he's not the best. Can he turn into a franchise player? Potentially. Eli Manning's getting up there. Let's be real. I mean, personally, I think he was not the best quarterback in that draft class. I, would have I was sh shell-shocked by when they took Daniel Jones over Dwayne Haskins because – I'm surprised Dwayne Haskins fell that low to the Redskins. I think they got a phenomenal player in Dwayne Haskins. I watched him in college. Great arm. Great accuracy. I, think, I just think of Daniel Jones coming out of Duke. Like, what, like, what does that prove for the NFL? I mean, they have quarterbacks now in back-to-back -back draft class, one by Duke and one by UNC, who are notorious basketball organizations. So I'm just saying, I don't see as though that he should be a franchise player after playing one game. Yeah, and I was, I'm just going to agree with you on that. I think he was at the right place at the right time. That this lucky break that he's gotten has been a really great opportunity that was just you know like presented to him because that's what it was. He was drafted in the first round, right? Yeah, yeah drafted in yeah, the first yeah, round. First Sorry. Round, yeah. Woo, Top it's 10 been pick. a week. Top 10 um, <laughs> But no, he was drafted in the first round. But I think you can't make – a statement that large to say he's going to be the next franchise player for the New York Giants. Giants? Yep, that's it. I'm so sorry. It's okay. He's going to be the franchise player for the Giants because he has played one game. He it's has a small played a sample singular size. singular game. It's a small, it's a seriously small sample and size. And like, I would want to say like, yeah, he's a, he has a great passing percentage. Like that's followed him from Duke. It's around 60% passing completion rate, but that's pretty average and that's pretty low in the NFL. I mean, yeah, just, it doesn't, he, we need to, I need to see more consistency from him. I need to see his game correlate. He is one for one. He is one for one. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, a lot of, uh, many quarterbacks did that. I just think he, I mean, I was really impressed with him. He was slinging the ball all over the place, and he was hit, hitting the offensive guys where the offensive guys could catch it and not the defense. Tom Brady's notorious for doing that, and I think that we need to, need to pump the brakes on Daniel Jones a little bit. And I think that he's a great player. Like, he has a lot of game knowledge. Like, he's very aware, of it, and that showed – during that game, like he knew where to throw, where not to throw. He knew, he knew what to do. Obviously, he's trained to do that. But I think of, it's something that he needs to grow into. And if mm -hmm. we have one sample size and one game that happened to be just a tremendous game, that's great. He could be a, still be a pretty average player in a really great situation. And, you know, I just think, like, again, I mean, we're talking about him playing the Bucks. The Bucks are kind of an abysmal franchise whose defense hasn't really shown flashes. It's like and having the JV. On. It's like having the JV team play the varsity team. Yeah, it's a scrimmage. Basically, it's but a really nice Daniel scrimmage. Jones's feet should not go unnoticed. But I think we should consider the fact that it's only one game. We have in one the game. NFL we season. have one sample size, and you can't put that much pressure on one kid. Yep. It's first year in the NFL. Don't let him burn out. Don't pull a Johnny Manziel, please. Well, we'll find out next Sunday. Moving on to baseball. The postseason is just days away. The Astros, Yankees, and Dodgers all come into the postseason with at least 100 wins. Who's your favorite to win it all, Cam? Honestly, I believe Houston is a juggernaut. Absolutely juggernaut of a team. They have arguably the three best pitchers in baseball. I mean, they have the two-headed monster in Verlander and Cole, and I really believe that Zach Greinke can perform without the pressure of being the number one. Because Arizona, he got all that big money to be the number one guy, and I think he has a past history with anxiety that he just can't be that number one guy, but I think blanketed by Verlander and Cole, that's a, that's a trio to be reckoned with against MLB batters. Not to mention that their lineup is absolutely stacked. They have Bregman, Springer, Altuve, I mean, Correa when he's healthy. I mean, and you add Jordan Alvarez, who's the potential rookie of the year candidate in the AL, you got a potential, you don't want to pitch to any of those guys. Their bullpen's a little suspect. I think Depending on the health of Ryan Presley, who's like one of the most underrated relievers in all of baseball, 
I think their bullpen can be suspect at best. But I have Houston beating L.A. in the World Series this year. I really don't like that you picked that team because you just put all of my arguments against – all of your arguments against my team on the table in the first minute. Um, I have the Dodgers pick, taking the World Series this year because, honestly, they're really due for a pennant. They're really due for a pennant. They, were, they fell out last year, like, just short against the Sox. And then they lost the year before yep. against, mm -hmm. guess what? against the Houston. Astros, Houston. Yep. And it's just like they have they have been so close like over the past two years. They've been like a game. Yeah, it's, no, it's a game. No, yeah. And I think that they just have such a stacked lineup for like hitters with like Cody Bellinger. And honestly, can we be real? I think if the Brewers had not lost um, Christian Yelich, I think they would have been pretty good. They would have been a pretty good contender. We're just going to acknowledge that because I think that they're... Christian Yelich is a game changer. Oh, my he gosh. An incredible hitter. Clear-cut MVP candidate. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. But I think that, like, the Dodgers, they have Cody Bellinger, they have Corey Seager, they have Max Muncy, who's always overlooked. He's a great yeah. hitter. Max Muncy, great beard. Max Muncy is just Wonderful. one of the most underrated players <laughs> in all of baseball he is. as well. And I think that they have a pretty great bullpen. They have pitchers like Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw, who many people could say he's a one-trick pony. He has a killer fastball. But that is because he knows where to put it. He knows that it's fast, and he can always deliver with that fastball. Yeah. And also, Hyunjin Ryu, it's, I think he's everyone's sleeper. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is a dark horse for the Cy Young candidate in Definitely. the NL. He's very overlooked. And I personally, I believe that Clayton Kershaw is kind of getting a little washed up at this point. And like, you he doesn't have Clayton the same Kershaw. velocity on that fastball, no, but that curveball is still but devastating. That curveball is still yeah. devastating. And I think that with the help of like Hyunjin Ryu and with Walker Buehler, I think that because honestly, like Hyun Jun Yu ha Ryu has such a killer sinker. Like oh, yeah. it doesn't break as hard as a slider, obviously, but it still it still messes with people. And I think that the speed that he has on it, and it just like it makes a number. A, they've I don't have the percentage with me, which is not great. But the amount of fat, uh, ground balls that it produces when he throws that pitch just makes for such an easy out. And I think that a combination of the great fielding that's on the Dodgers and with this bullpen and with like the power hitters, I think that they are due to win the pennant this year. Absolutely. All right, and thanks for tuning in to Off the Bench. For more, visit our website at webn.tv for Cameron Manning and Katie Reed. I'm Ethan McDowell. We'll see you next week.